Welcome back to YouTube, it's my channel for an everyday life of an Aspie. My name is Aspie Ansel, or as people may know me as now as Aspie, and basically I'm welcoming you these and all these to my channel, and I'm hoping that some of these have been informative and educational and motivated to you all to actually share your life story or what have you, as I'm all about mental health awareness and sharing my stories with AS, OCD and the like. <clears throat> and all that I do, basically, I'm all talking about right now about the series of basically the epileptic series that I want to address hopefully for the rest of this week and maybe if it has to next week of what I want to share and address to you all basically. So in all that I do, basically, it's broken up into different parts down to little chunks hopefully to give you a better understanding of what it is and hopefully there's some clear examples and clinical definitions that I've shared with you all onto what I can understand based on my training, education and life experiences, working with different people, different needs. I'm not always 100% right so I put a disclaimer out right now that I'm not a medical doctor, I'm just speaking from experience and just sharing my life stories as well as just basically my experiences and what I've been dealing with so far in my life, be it, you know, people with different special needs right now versus, you know, everyday things. But in all further ado, basically, right now, I am also just wanted to say I don't condone self-harm in any way. Also, to be aware, as you're following me on this channel, hopefully, with these examples and key definitions that have commonly been shared so much, so in time again, that'll be a better understanding for you all. So... And all further ado, this is just the causes of epilepsy, basically. And as I said before, many people have this misconception of epilepsy of the causes and whatnot, but I do my very best to share what I've known based on my knowledge and experience with working with different epileptic patients because as we know, every epileptic patient you know, that suffers from seizures will vary from person to person and point depending on their you know, triggers or the causes as I'm mentioning right now. So as we know there are many different causes as well of the various types of epilepsies out there. Most epilepsies are residual, residual epilepsies which means that the epilepsy, epilepsy remains as of a cerebral disorder which occurred in the past. This residual epilepsies can be tracked back to the infection of the mother during pregnancy, i.e. maybe for example rubella or some sort of other disease, mumps and all that to oxygen deficiency at birth, to encephalitis or meningitis in childhood, so, you know, another classical example is that, basically, some kids may suffer from meningitis or some other clinical thing, or to cerebral contusion, which is your brain damage caused by a traffic accident or just some horrific brain tumour, basically be it cancer in the brain or some genetical, genetic disorder of your Alzheimer's or dementia and the like. Another cause of epilepsy is basically the process epilepsy. This type of epilepsy is caused by a progressive cerebral disease which is still active, you know, while you're, you know, alive and breathing. This most this is the most significant and common one, however, the cause of it, which is obviously the brain tumour. But it can also be caused by disturbed blood circulation or metabolic diseases. Epilepsies, which are the symptom of a residual or progressive cerebral disorder, is called symptomatic seizures, or epilepsy, shall I say. Last but not least, epilepsies are not hereditary diseases. Many people may think it is. They cannot be passed on from one generation to the next. Nevertheless, there can be a cluster of cases of epilepsy in certain families. You know, this is because, as with many diseases, for instance, diabetes or... <coughs> rheumatism, the illness itself is not hereditary, but the predisposition to it is. Any additional disorder, e.g. complications during the pregnancy or at birth to a serious illness or head injury, however, can trigger the onset of epilepsy. It is, however, not always possible to find the actual trigger or cause of the disease. Such type of epilepsy, which is mainly caused by genetic disposition, is known as a genetic, genetic epilepsy. And around one third of all epilepsies, the cause of the disease remains unknown for this genet, genetic epilepsy that I'm addressing to you. It's clear, therefore, that anyone can get epilepsy at any given moment of time in their life, however, regardless what it may be, you know, be it, you know, from birth to adult stage or to even, you know, early stage. 
So that ends basically the causes of epilepsy that are really short and brief on it. Basically give me the like for thumbs up for support and engagement. Share my videos around to spread awareness and understanding of all these channels basically of these videos. Feel free to sub to my channel if you haven't done so basically for weekly daily updates and also feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook basically. Uh, once again thanks for your support and encouragement and advice so far for some of you you know do what you love love what you do love yourself love one another be kind to yourself and others you know forgive yourself and others till next time i'll see you all again soon